Hello, it's Future Rain here to tell you that I made the dumb mistake of deleting a bunch of my footage from the beginning of the week two vlog. So, sorry about that. I'm very disappointed in myself, but I'm trying not to be too hard on myself because I know this kind of thing happens and mistakes happen. It is what it is, and there's nothing I can do about it now. I had an entire time lapse of me redoing my shelves to share with you guys and now it's gone so I'm just super bummed but it's okay today will be a better day it's fine I'm just not gonna dwell on it and you know I hope that you do enjoy this vlog otherwise it pretty much starts on day 11 <laughs> so there's two days missing but it wasn't like I was getting a ton of reading done during that time anyway I did start Uzumaki, which I was really enjoying and decided that I was going to um, read like a chapter or two before bed and go ahead and start um, The Babysitter by Arl Stein, which was my childhood spooky story pick. So um, other than that, I don't think I mentioned too much. I don't think you missed out on a whole lot other than my whole bookshelf deal, but I mean it is what it is and it happens. So I do hope you still enjoy this vlog, even though I know it's probably going to be a pretty short one. It's done! I do need more shelves though, because I have a few other books. But otherwise, it's done. I kind of figured I wasn't going to have space for everything, but that's okay. I do have like... Just some extra books, some are my husband's, and then uh, some of my like coffee table books, and then a few of my white books, so. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. I don't know how functional it's gonna be. Guess we'll just have to see. Good morning. It is day 11 of Horror and 24. And yesterday I did not start the babysitter like I wanted to. I ended up starting it last night instead. So I got like 55 pages in. I just cleaning up the book room and everything yesterday took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, it was just like an all day project, but I'm so happy with it and I'm happy that the shelves are clean and everything is on the shelf for the most part. So I definitely feel a lot better about that and I can't wait to get a new shelf eventually. And I'll probably just reorganize it at that point. I don't know if I'll keep the rainbow thing. We'll just see how functional it is. It's really nice to look at though, so I'm happy with it for now. Uh, like I said, I got 55 pages in. The nostalgia's all there. I'm so excited to read this. I'm so excited about it. Um, so this story follows a young girl who takes a babysitting job across town. And in this town, the, there are news reports about a man that is stalking and beating up babysitters very, very badly to where they need to be hospitalized. For some reason, I said, like, I think in my TBR video I said that he was murdering them. That's not true. It's he's just beating them up really badly, which I guess makes sense. It's middle grade is for kids. <laughs> so um, there's definitely like little bits that are like coming back to me. I don't remember the ending. So I'm very excited to see if like that ends up coming all coming back if I'm able to predict it or if I end up surprised in the end, we'll see. I'm gonna start reading it right now. Robin is down for her first nap of the day. I have to work later today, so if I can at least, you know, at least get most of this done, I'll feel good about it. And um, yeah, I don't know, like I feel like I'm making okay progress with Horror in 24. Like I'm, we're almost like at the halfway point and I have three books 
done and two that are like halfway so I feel like I'm doing pretty good but yeah we'll see I'm gonna start reading this right now <laughs> So this is my life, just following Robin around, making sure she's not getting into anything. <laughs> she's just constantly on the move. So crazy to think that she's going to be walking soon. Just blowing my mind. There's little baby, oh. <laughs> They're best friends. Yeah. Hello, everyone. It is now day 12 of the Horror in 24 readathon. I'm sitting outside with Robin. She doesn't really want to be put down, so I thought some fresh air might be nice for the both of us. But, um,. Yeah, we got a very late start to the morning. Robin didn't wake up until like 9.30, which is super late for her. And um, that meant her nap was super late. So she only had one nap today. Didn't get a whole lot as far as reading done. But I did finish The Babysitter by Arl Stein. And I was quite surprised that a lot of it didn't really come back to me when I was reading it but at the same time I have a terrible memory like those who know me would know that about me um so I wasn't all that shocked that a lot of it didn't come back to me which was great though because it was you know a nice little surprise of a book I think as far as like anything that I really wasn't a fan of about the book was so we're following Jenny who takes this job as a babysitter for this couple across town and she's their uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hagen and their son's name is Donnie. So Jenny's mother knowing that there are like attacks happening in the town on babysitters like it's totally fine with her babysitting and then there's like a a boy that Jenny is interested in that's very interested in her and he seems like very pushy and kind of obnoxious throughout the book but other than that all of the little twists and turns were a lot of fun being like a I guess it's YA it's not really middle grade but I loved it it was a lot of fun don't know what I'm gonna read it yet but still very much loving what I'm reading and very excited to pick up White is for Witching. I know that it's it's classified as like a cult fiction. It is my gothic horror novel pick. It's more I guess neo-gothic from the blurbs that I've been reading but um, I'm excited to read it. Sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's about this like mysterious house and these sisters that live in the house and I think the house becomes like a bed and breakfast or something. Not sure, but I'm really excited about it. Been looking forward to getting into Helen Oyami's works because I do have a couple of her books, so we will see. Hello everyone. So it is now day 13 of Horror and 24. It is Thursday, it's around noon. I had some stuff to do this morning. I had to go to the tire shop because the other day I ran over a drill bit and 
my tire just completely went flat. It was just a lot. It was a lot. But that kind of stuff happens a lot living in the high desert on dirt roads and all that. So, I mean, it is what it is. Robin has decided not to nap today. So I'm sitting on the floor while she plays. And, um, yeah, she just... She took a little tiny baby one, like maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, and then popped her right back up. And I've tried to put her down ever since, and she's just not going down, which it's fine. She's fine, she's happy, she's not fussy, so we're good. I started White is for Witching by Helen Oyemi. This is a book I've probably put in my cart like 15 times and never bought it until this readathon. And I was like, I'm finally gonna buy this. I'm gonna read it for the readathon. And um, I have one other Helen Oyemi book. I have uh, a gingerbread, which I haven't read yet, but I know it's kind of like a magical realism type story. And I'm not sure if this is that or not. I'm getting hints of that, but I'm not entirely sure. It's definitely categorized as a cult fiction, not really horror, but it comes up a lot in like horror recommendations online. So. I mean, it's fine. I think it works. I'm not even going to try to explain it because I've already tried like 50 times and I'm not doing it justice. So uh, I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for this one. There's something strange about the Silvers family house in the closed off town of Dover, England. Grand and cavernous with hidden passages and buried secrets. It's been home to four generations of silver women, Anna, Jennifer, Lily, and now Miranda, who has lived in the house with her twin brother, Elliot, ever since their father converted it to a bread and, bread and, bed, bed and breakfast. <laughs> the silver women have always had a strong connection, a pull over one another that reaches across time and space. And when Lily, Miranda's mother, passes away suddenly while on a trip abroad, Miranda begins suffering strange ailments. An eating disorder starves her. She begins hearing voices. When she brings a friend home, Dover's hostility towards outsiders physically manifests within the four walls of the Silver House. And the lives of everyone inside are irrevocably changed. So, um, that sounds really freaking good. It's kind of giving me those, like, vibes of the between with the whole, um, um, hearing voices and stuff like that. Uh, interested to see where this one's gonna go. I am 65 pages in and the writing style is kind of hard to get into. It's the perspectives shift and it's not like chapter by chapter. It's kind of like just random paragraphs. All of a sudden you're in a different perspective. Um, I've read books where that's happened before and sometimes it worked out to be fine. Sometimes it didn't work for me at all. Um, so, so far with this, I'm just like trying to get into it, trying to see how I'm going to feel about it uh, because it's possible I'll just adapt to it and we'll be good. But uh, there's definitely some weird dynamics that are happening with family members and I'm like, what? Like... It's just a very weird family. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see where it goes or like what what's going on with this house and whatnot. So uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, that one's just kind of wandering. So I guess I will go ahead and try to read some of my book right now if I can. I mean, maybe just later when she takes a nap, but um, that's about it. I guess I'll update you guys when I get a bit further into the book. You're so big, baby girl. Well, that didn't take very long. So while Robin is sleeping, I'm gonna go to Gwen's page. Oh, my friend Gwen. And I'm gonna watch one of her read with me videos. So I can sit here and read my book with Gwen.
What are you doing? Hello everyone. Good morning. We're talking this morning. It is Friday morning and it's day 14 of the Horror in 24 Readathon. We're a little crabby because we're definitely ready for a nap. But mommy has to go to work in 20 minutes. So we're gonna have to wait till daycare for naps. Um, so I did get a pretty good amount read yesterday of White is for Witching. I didn't get a lot read last night at all of anything because this one decided she was going to be awake until midnight and just be in play mode all night, which is fun. <laughs> but um, so far I'm about halfway through it now. So I think I'm making pretty good time. I really, you know, I'm happy as long as I finish it by the weekend because I would really like to start Survivor Song. That way I can have that book read before the live show. So, why does for witching? So here's pretty much like what, how the story goes. Like we're following the perspective of Elliot and Miranda who are twin brother and sister. And they live in this house, like it's a giant house that their father converted into a bed and breakfast. The house was passed down to their mother by their great grandmother. And the house is pretty peculiar. <laughs> Um, so what I've gleaned from it is we are getting, because it doesn't, the writing style is still very confusing to me, by the way. Um, we are getting multiple perspectives. We're getting Elliot's perspective, Miranda's perspective, and then in parts we're getting the house's perspective, which is very interesting. <laughs> um, it's obviously a very odd house. And um, it's hard to tell really what's going on. I am feeling a little better about the writing style, but I'm still a little lost. Um, there are definite trigger warnings in this. Um, obviously, in the synopsis, it does explain that Miranda has an eating disorder. There's a definite trigger warning for that. I wanted to let you guys know. And then there are small brief mentions like throughout the story of suicide so um it's kind of it's just such a weird book so i which i like i i definitely like do not mind a weird book every now and again so we are getting the perspective of the house which i'm finding like very weird and interesting uh. She's just crawling all around the house. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a little difficult to tell whose perspective we're reading from until like I'm already like a few paragraphs in or like a few sentences in or sometimes I can tell right away, but sometimes it takes a second before I realize what perspective I'm reading from, which is kind of, you know, it, it makes for, are really confusing, um, just uh, disorienting read, but we'll see. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. I'm not hating it or anything. I'm just a little um, thrown off by the way that it's written. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess I'll just update you guys a little later, maybe tonight if I can. You know, it's kind of hard to to do all the things, but very excited to uh, get more into this and, and see how I feel by the end, because it's definitely a weird one. Hello, happy day 16 of the Horror in 24 Readathon. I just got off work, that is why I'm a complete mess right now. But I wanted to update you guys. I feel like I haven't updated in a while. Yesterday, I didn't read at all. The day before, I ended up leaving my book at work, which I'm still reading White is for Witching. So that night, I didn't get to read this. So I ended up finishing Uzumaki, which was really, 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 really good. It is so unique. 
I absolutely loved it. I love obviously the art style. I will put in a few clips here of um, what I'm talking about when I refer to the art style and um, I won't spoil you guys for anything. It'll just be um, little bits of some pages with just some really pretty art. Uh, it's definitely pretty crazy. It was a lot of fun reading this at night. Um, there's definitely like a part that has to do with snails that was like really gross. I don't like snails. Snails are really nasty. So <laughs> that, that definitely like freaked me out and gave me the huge duties. I know that Genji Ito has several other horror bind ups like this. He has like I think one is Gyo, the other one is Tomi, and then he has fragments of horror, which I don't know if they're like horror short stories or not. I'm not sure what they are, but I, I want all of it now. I want all of them. I totally think they're worth the money because it's like 20 bucks or so for these big bind ups, but they're so worth it. Like this one's so worth it to me, at least. I put all the rest on my wish list and hopefully I'll get around to buying them at some point uh, because I loved it it was so great still reading white is for witching I have hundred and twenty pages left of this so my goal is to finish this today if I finish it today that means the end of this vlog will be another three books that means six books total finished for the Horror in 24 readathon. I feel like I'm making good time, but I'm also feeling the pressure of finishing. So um, I'm hoping in the like last eight days, I could finish the two books that I have left on my TBR, which are Salem's Lot and Survivor Song. I'm really excited to read that book. I'm so, so excited to read Survivor Song. I have heard some mixed things, so I'm a little nervous about it. Um, so far, White is for Witching is still really hard for me to get into. Um, the writing style is just making it difficult for me to really get into the story. Um, but I'm obviously going to truck through it. I'm not going to DNF it because I only have 120 pages left. And I'm still really curious about this house and what's going to happen when Miranda brings in this new friend or whatever because that still hasn't happened yet and we're almost at the end. I've hit a point where it's, I guess it's part two um, and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where it's going to go. I am hoping it goes somewhere good because yeah, it's been kind of rough for me to get into this one and I'm kind of sad because I've, de I've really looked forward to reading this one, um, but I'm not going to knock it down just yet because it could really wow me in the last 120 pages and, you know, getting this far, I have enjoyed it somewhat. It's just not really grasping my attention all that well. Not as much as I'd hoped, so. Hey everyone, I know I said I would update you last night, but I didn't get around to it. I ended up finishing the book in bed and then everyone was asleep, so I did not want to wake anyone. <laughs> so, White is for Witching. <clears throat> don't know what I'm going to rate it. Don't know how I feel about it. It's really, really confusing. I think it might be over my head. I might be a little too dumb for this one. But, um, it's very lyrically written, which I enjoy, but at the same time, it's so hard to comprehend like what's actually happening sometimes like some of these scenes I'm like is this really going on and then none of that really gets resolved in the book like things that are hinted at in the beginning are never resolved it's a very messy way that it's written and I think it's supposed to be like similar to real life I think that it's supposed to be messy because your things don't always just are so cut and dry in the end and I feel like that's what the book is trying to do and I think I'm just too dumb to get it but um there are certain scenes in here that I really did enjoy like Miranda's scenes with or those specifically I enjoyed I feel like I wish that would have been more present in the book because we only really get Miranda and or's relationship the last 120 pages or so um so for me, I don't know, I feel like I, I could have, I would have enjoyed more of their story. Um, 
I don't know. It's really hard because there are some things that I really liked about this. I like the whole creepiness about the house and all that. But it's so hard to understand what's real and what's not. But not in the good way that I normally like, I guess. I don't know. I, I think it's one that I'll have to sit on for a while. And then maybe at one point reread it. I would definitely be... I would reread it just to see if I like understand it a little better. Sometimes that can happen with a book where you're just completely lost and then you reread it and things start to make sense. But it's just, I don't, I don't know if that will happen here. <laughs> I guess we'll have to see one day if I decide to reread it. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, this is definitely a book if you, if you don't mind like completely open-ended endings or just stories altogether because there are characters in here that um, are introduced in the beginning and then you never see them again. And it's really hard to actually find a plot in there because there's just all these different like stories going on. There's Miranda with her eating disorder, everything she's going on with that, their grief over their mother, the house doing weird things, the um, relationship she has with her brother, the relationship that she has with Orr, and all of these things that are just happening, nothing's really coming to a close. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I like it, but I don't. So, I don't know. It'll be a hard one to rate for sure. I definitely think, um, if you like very inventive stories that are written very poetically, and it's a lot to actually, like, dive into a lot I don't think it was a good choice for a readathon. Maybe that's what it is because, you know, you want to read it and get it over with. Like, not necessarily, but just get your enjoyment out of it and be done. With this, uh, it's definitely one that you have to, like, sit on and digest for a while. Really think about it. And I don't think I was able to give it, like, that, like time the time that it needed I guess I don't know I'm having a hard time with words but I'm gonna go ahead and close out this vlog before I ramble too much and uh I'm gonna pick up survivor song later today yeah, I guess I will um see you guys in the next vlog bye